So we hit our ninth, ninth anniversary a few days ago. Um, there's been a ton of change over the last nine years. And we wanted to kind of take this moment to look back over the last nine years and look forward as we got acquired by C1 about six months ago to start looking at what the future holds for us. So Eugene, thank you for joining me. Eugene Cazine, our, one of our founders and uh, originators for Prime TSR. Let's look back a little bit. Um, Prime TSR, we started as Silent IT nine years ago. Talk a little bit about where we came from and who we are now. Yeah, it's uh, certainly been a journey. Nine years is a long time. And if you ask me nine years ago, when Josh and I were just sitting actually across the street from this building, uh, having lunch and talking about the concept of silent IT, I could not even imagine the journey that we would go through and all the different milestones and some pivots that we had to do along the way to get to where we are now. And it's been a fun ride. So nine years is definitely a long time. Yeah, starting out as a consultancy that focused on scaling systems and at some point pivoting by looking back on what we had done, the type of experience that we had gained, which happened in 2018, and we became Prime TSR, having that realization at the time that we are really good at transforming companies, not just technology for them. And TSR, by the way, stands for Tech, Tech Solutions Reimagined. And reinventing ourselves as a modernization consultancy uh, was huge for us. And it gave us that sort of the rocket boost to get to where we are now. The top premier modernization shop, one of the fastest growing in the country. And um, aligning ourselves with our client, you know, cloud partners, primarily AWS. It's, it's been huge. And that reimagining was actually the kind of the catapult then, right? It started us down that big partner push, helped realign the way that we actually talk about what we do, um, and really just changed the way our hiring profile came out, right? So from day one, we focused on being different than other consultancies in a way that we wouldn't have a pyramid structure, meaning that you have very experienced experts at the top that usually come in to do sales when consulting organizations go and sell projects. But then when it comes to execution, you get sort of very junior folks, a lot of them, and you hope that the project gets delivered simply by sheer numbers. We wanted something different. We did not like it in our past lives before Prime TSR, this approach, and uh, we decided that we were going to have no pyramid or very narrow pyramid uh, full of experts that know what they're doing. And they have not just from the technical expertise perspective, but also industry backgrounds. So heavy focus on verticalization, industry verticals uh, was something that we were pursuing from day one, but we doubled down on it when we became prime TSR. The other thing that came out, again, we sort of crystallized it by looking back at the previous five years of our existence is this concept of bias for action. Frankly, we stole it from AWS uh, when we became partners with them and they, we started hearing this term when they were describing the type of the approach that we did to deliver projects. And so we not only we love the phrase bias for action, but we start, it became one of our cultural pillars. And it's also something that we are looking for in, in the people that we hire. Right, we screen for it, and it's, it's one of those non-negotiables when we bring a new person on, on, onto the team. Again, we are still, at the end of the day, a consulting company, a product-building consulting company. But being able to delight customers, being able to have that drive for excellence and support your teammates um, is still a big focus of ours. You, you just hit that, the, the side button on, like, culture. Right. And if we hit, you know, bias for action and the type of folks that we actually focus on, um, that teamwork and community that keeps on getting built over the years, it stayed true even from day one. Absolutely. Yeah. It's always impressive, um, especially when you go through so much change like you guys have or we have. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's an effort. 
to keep this going uh, and make sure as we grow. Frankly, I think it's like the large, the biggest single objective for us as a leadership team is to make sure that we don't lose the sight of the, these values and this culture as we get bigger. Because it's, I've seen a number of companies, not just consulting, but just startups that as they get bigger, this, these things sort of dissolve. And it's the role of the leadership team to make sure it's all held together and, and the next level of leaders, the new generation of leaders is still maintaining that focus. Switch gears a little bit. Um, I, one of those big pieces that had come out as you made that transition to prime TSR and reimagining what we do was the idea of digital transformation. Um, and it was actually core to the why you guys transformed as well from silent IT to prime TSR. And I say you guys because it was prior to my starting with you, but um, as we've kind of gone on, we keep on refining that definition of digital transformation. Um, digital 2.0 and the next revolution, right? Yeah. So uh, if you can, give us a quick brief. What is digital 2.0 to you? So I view digital transformation as a fairly stale concept. It's been around for more than 10 years. People have meant different things when they said digital transformation, but more or less the concept for many was taking their manual, paper-based, disjointed processes and taking them online into application software. And that worked for a while. Some companies were ahead of others. Uh, the ones that were ahead were more successful. We saw that and uh, we also saw that it was our mission to help those that were behind, that had some legacy, uh, to, to, to let them catch up to be digital as well. And then 2020 in March, COVID happened. And we saw this massive drive to digitally transform that we haven't seen in the previous 10 years. All these companies that were stragglers, they suddenly started digitally transforming for, you know, I'm overusing this term, but that's what they did. And because they had no choice. It was that or either going the way of Blockbuster. Um, now, there is a fairly level playing field. Most companies have digitally transformed to some degree. For those that were ahead, that were up, sort of the, the ones in front of this movement, they started, I noticed them starting to scratch their heads. They no longer have the competitive advantage anymore that they had just two years ago. They need to go a step beyond digital, which I call digital 2.0, and really gain that competitive advantage once again. So things like AI, uh, advanced analytics, predictive analytics, uh, machine learning, all of those things are part of digital 2.0 and something that companies truly need to embrace if they wanna tilt the playing field in their advantage. Uh, some are already doing it, others are thinking about it, but not necessarily know how to approach this. And so we see this as our mission these days to help companies to get to digital 2.0. And for some, it means going from fairly basic level all the way to digital 2.0. But at the, at the same time, I don't think many of them have an option not to. Otherwise, they'll be left behind. Yeah. And I know we've, we've had a lot of conversations over digital 2.0, and it's really just recreating that real interactions and real experience that they're having already and trying to find a way to duplicate in that in their digital estate. How does this kind of to bring it back to that bias for action mentality? How do you transform organizations without having these huge roadmaps that take forever to implement? Uh, you do it three months at a time. That's as basic as this. Um, and it takes as agile, very small organization to do something like this. I think that's where we come in with a competitive advantage because there are plenty of fantastic organizations that can do enterprise software, that could do advanced things. But you have to be small enough, like Prime TSR, to move quickly and have a, at the same time the process and industrialization of delivery 
to be able to execute projects in these three month increments, where at the end of the three months, you ship a working product that the client can already take to their customers. They can start charging money for it. They can start getting feedback and really see the value of these transformational activities. You've had an example there, it sounds like. Do you wanna share a couple of the stories real quick? I'm sure many of you have read that Nike is getting into the metaverse game. That's a fantastic example of digital 2.0 because they of course can sell sneakers on their website like an online store but they realize that that's doing it just like everybody else. A much more digital 2.0 way is to gamify the entire experience and let the customers run around in this virtual game, virtual world, and buy sneakers and try them on and have fun at the same time and listen to fun DJs and try to perhaps even have like battles with other uh, players in this game to get the sneakers that they want. Uh, in a more traditional approach, like one of our customers, uh, a large insurance company is using the power of AI as an insurance company, they uh, see a lot of fraud and claims and being able to detect fraudulent claims quickly is something that differentiates digital 2.0 insurance companies versus more traditional ones. And money out of the door for insurance companies is controlling that flow is what keeps them in business. So I think like that one customer where we help them with this fraud detection, uh, building those algorithms using AI and machine learning is a fantastic example of such a project. There are plenty of other examples in healthcare where we do a ton of work as well, uh, transforming, uh, again, these heavily manual processes into, into new processes that uh, bring voice recognition, um, machine learning and AI and, and combining the power of that to help doctors make more money, but at the same time also deliver better care to patients. And that's a common theme through all of these, right? Is it's not necessarily about the organization itself, the insurance firm, the healthcare org, or even that Nike, right? It's really about servicing the customers, the, the patients, the consumers, to give them a more seamless experience. And it's all delivered by transforming the organization in the way that they present in the digital way. Yeah, I think being digital is not the goal. The goal is all about the experience, employee experience, patient experience, customer experience. All of these different experiences culminate in, in a better service at the end of the day uh, to all of your constituents. And every company these days, frankly, needs to do this. Otherwise, they'll become irrelevant. And I think that's a perfect way to wrap on the digital experience and digital 2.0 because that sums up everything that we are trying to do with all of our clients. That's right, yeah. So Eugene, we've talked a little bit about the digital experience, a little bit of our past. I want to dig in a little bit about the last nine years. Um, going off and starting your own organization and starting from nothing is a scary experience in a lot of ways. What are some of the, like, the shining moments that you can think of over the last nine years that you'd like to kind of point out as just huge successes or even some stumbling points where we're learning experiences as you've gone through it. I think looking back, right, it's hindsight 2020. If I were to do this all over again, knowing what I know, what I learned in nine years, I could probably, together with good partners in the team, we could build the same company in half the time. But without that, all of those experiences, we would not be able to do that. That being said, there were a few, I'll say scary moments. You know, a year or two into this, right? It was 2014 or 15. I, I remember us, like a few large clients ran into trouble and they started shutting down projects, including ours. And we all of a sudden had a lot of people on payroll that we couldn't afford. So moments like that were definitely pivotal, figuring out in a pinch what to do and how to keep the team uh, which we are very proud of. Like a lot of consulting companies have this model of 
you know, as soon as person goes on a bench, the start, clock starts ticking, and then four weeks later, you roll the people off. We've never had to do this. Luckily for us, we, could, we were able to afford it because the work we had done allowed us at the time to build up some cushion. Uh, but those were definitely scary moments. Going and learning for the first five years, uh, I think we were going not as fast as I would have liked myself to see. But then when we finally set back in 2018 and recognized that we need to rebrand into Prime TSR, and it's not just the name, but obviously all the things that it meant and becoming a modernization consultancy versus a scalability shop uh, was a huge pivotal moment. Could I imagine it when I was starting with Josh in 2013? No, we didn't know what was going to come in five years. Uh, we sort of, as any entrepreneurial organization, you learn every single day and you look back and make mistakes and hopefully do something right to be able to survive another day. Um, but along the way, we got some fantastic clients, some big brands. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing consultancies. We recently, thanks to you in large part, got a healthcare competency, uh, which puts us in something like with healthcare and some other competencies that we have. We are like one of the top five consulting partners for AWS in the United States. Given our size and the organizations we compete against, this is unbelievable. And like sometimes I look back and I'm like, I can't believe we built it. You know, and I, when I talk to Josh, it's, it's mind, you know, mind blowing. Um, and the fact that by now we, we've been acquired by Converge One, which I think is a fantastic partner for us for many reasons. Uh, and it will give us that next boost to, it's essentially like this next major milestone for us as a company to get us to that next level of growth. And that's what the, the actual acquisition was all about. And joining forces with C1 was to really just boost all the growth that you've accomplished over the last five years and we have accomplished to really create the next big scaling portion of the organization. So as we look forward a little bit, and I'll, I'll transition you into this, right? And this is where we take out the crystal ball a little bit. What do you imagine the next, let's call it three to five years, holding in store for us? The, the goal is to triple in size in that time frame uh, and become the largest, the most successful modernization consultancy in the country, right? I won't claim that it will be competing with large, big brand consultancies because I don't think we are in the, in the same segment as them. But in the modernization segment, we will become the fastest growing, the biggest, the most successful consulting organization in the country. I have no doubt about it. I love it. I'm a little scared, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> so one of the big pieces of that scale is going to come back to our people again. I think we've done a fantastic job at holding on to that, that cultural just core of fast, nimble, and staying true to that bias for action while affecting change with all of our clients and helping them transform as they go. How much change do you think we're going to have to do with our organization to really be able to scale at that level? That change is already on the way, and it primarily comes through maturity of our work structure. Um, for a while, I resisted creating an old structure. We were extremely flat. Uh, but it, we realized, both Josh and I, that this is not a scaling mos model that can scale. We need the next generation of leaders and leaders under them to be able to manage not just the people, but the projects, the work, the, everything that we do day to day. And so, putting that maturity in place without compromising on our values and delivery model is one of the largest challenges. I, I won't say it's not, it's easy, uh, but it's something that we are laser focused on as a leadership team and, uh, and we're going to get it done. We'll get there. Love it. So one last piece, give us one of the best stories you can from like the early days, something that not everybody's heard about. We had this one customer that 
a multinational organization, something like 400,000 people. And it was an ex a customer already. Uh, and their system for employee reviews that they were using, uh, like the, you know, the performance reviews, that system was having a hard time. And to a point where it, em, the employees would get reviewed and they were unable to re record their, uh, the feedback. The result of that though, like something that's not as intuitive perhaps, is that the employees could not get raises without the performance feedback. So all of a sudden this became a massive issue for IT Big organization priority. that needs to run this system. And so I ran in the hallway into the CIO of this organization, small talk. I asked him how things are going. And he says, you know, I got this giant black eye. And so I look at him because he was a lot taller than me. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't have a black eye. He's like the black eye in the face of IT. And he talks about this project. And he says that it needs to, this problem needs to go away. And so Josh and I, we together a team and we get to work and it was a lot of transformational work like we always do and some of it was very much tactical like we need to get it working within a week or two so employees could get the raises and then position that system for scale in the following year so it could sustain the growth of the company and so we did it uh, but this phrase about the black eye, it still stuck with me because it was such a non-intuitive thing for me initially, but then it made sense. It's a, a lot of these systems that our customers are running, uh, when they don't scale, when they fail, it's a giant black eye. And sometimes worse than that. Sometimes it's a, it could be a heart attack. So we're there to basically stem the, the flow of, of pain and hopefully get them a little bit healthier. That's right. We talked a little bit about the future and how we want to scale. If we're going to be the premier app modernization shop, or just really modernization shop in the country, and we've got C1 behind us, we've got all the people and the process and the culture to do it. Taking out the crystal ball again, how do we go about this? How do we inspire the organizations and clients we work with to work with us? I think for a lot of these organizations, it's about trusting that we are the ones that can do the job and we are the best position for this. And it comes down, these clients, even if they are not planning to hire me, but I always say, you got to look at three things. One is the expertise. That's always sort of the foundational piece. Like the, the organization has to have the experts. Uh, technical experts. The experience. What are some stories that the consulting company can tell to showcase that they have done this before and they know how to approach this, not just similar projects, but in that same industry that they speak the same language and understand the terminology? Because that learning curve could be steep. And last is, you know, focusing on agility. Because, yes, there are these massive multinational consulting companies that got the expertise and experience. But the differentiation that Prime TSR had for years is that we are agile. We can get, I already talked about the delivering, shipping and working products in three months is something that is unique to us. And I haven't, I haven't heard of many others that can do this. Certainly not the large organizations uh, that that have the scale, but they're not meant to deliver fast. And so that's the key. And I think we're going to double down on this. And that's how we are going to be continue to deliver projects. Expertise, credentialization, and then when it comes down to it, agility and speed. So that right. I think one of the common things we keep on saying back to it, forth to each other as we're talking about strategy, right? It's tangible results in a really, really short time frame, and just making yeah. sure that agility is always there. Yeah, having that pragmatic approach to delivery and treating your clients' priorities as your own because if you don't have their back, they will not be a client for long. Uh, and they're partners, right, in a larger way. We're sitting there with them to make sure that we're always delivering alongside. Exactly. Exactly.